99X, it's Barnes and Leslie, The Morning X. Been knee deep in the Atlanta Film Festival for the last couple of weeks. Started back on April 25th, and we had Christopher Escobar on at the beginning of the whole thing. I thought it would be great to have a check in, see what the closing night movie is going to be, and what's been happening down there. So, good morning, Christopher. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me back. Christopher is the executive director of a lot of things, but the Atlanta Film Festival is one of them. He yes. owns the Terra. He owns the Plaza, which are the two you know event spaces this year where this is going on. How's it been so far? It's been awesome. You know, it's been a terrific year having everyone back and celebrating film and getting our film community all together. And a busy weekend. I know this weekend going into it, Cinco de Mayo, of course, mm-hmm. is on Sunday. Now, you wrap yep. on Sunday or Saturday? Uh, so our closing night is Saturday, but then our final day is Sunday. So we have both Cinco de Mayo and May the 4th. Do you have uh, anything big planned? Yeah. So for May the 4th, we're going to be doing not one, but two Star Wars events. We're going to be oh. featuring both the original Star Wars Episode One uh, at the Terra, which for those who don't know, that's actually the first place where Star Wars played in Atlanta in 1977. Uh, so that'll be that'll be a matinee show. And then uh, related to that, at 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing the 25th anniversary screening of Episode One. Uh, which came out in 1999. And uh, I'm sure everybody knows Ewan McGregor, Liam Neeson star in that film as both Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn. And rumor has it, they are in town filming different projects. So you never know if they're going to be able to stop by. Mm. They would have to. Mm. Why wouldn't they want to give the people a thrill? If the force wills it, they will show up. (laughs) And they're probably living maybe near one of those two theaters all these guys renting houses around town that would be really cool pretty decent chance what's your closing night so the closing night movie will be tomorrow night Saturday what is it yep Sing Sing uh, and that stars uh, Coleman Domingo uh, which of course just got uh, an Academy Award nomination um, recently and uh, and he's and this is an incredible film. It's by A24. Um, the, the director is a relatively up and coming uh, writer director, Greg uh, uh, Quidar. And the film is just an incredibly beautiful film. It's about uh, this guy who was imprisoned in Sing Sing, you know, notorious jail. And he starts this theater group and is participating in this theater group. And it's kind of it's a drama, but has these really beautiful moments, these really comedic moments. And we're just really excited to be able to share it with everyone. Yeah, I saw a little bit about the film. I guess it's based on a real life like rehabilitation through the arts program that happened at Sing Sing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's, you know, so it's about people, it's about obviously redemption. It's about people, you know, kind of finding themselves. It's about people being for each other. Um, And the whole cast is actually made up of formerly incarcerated members of the actual theater troupe. So this is a, you know, this is art imitating life, imitating art, uh, you know, so it's kind of beautiful. Let's take a look at the trailer. This is going to be airing tomorrow night at the film festival. Which theater? Which one? This will be at the Plaza. At the Plaza. Check it out. It's called Sing Sing. We here to become human again and enjoy the things that is not in our reality. I think you guys are becoming real with each other, vulnerable. Listen, I already know what you're doing, know who you are, what you're about, bro. What? You don't get to tell me what I need in prison. You don't get to do that. And don't bring me in no dark corners no more. The world expects brothers like you and I to walk in with our heads held down. Nah, what you gotta walk in like a king. Everything is yours. I'm divine now. Yeah, this is my theater. Now give me some love. That's Sing Sing that's closing the Atlanta Film Festival tomorrow night. And those are the type of movies that the Academy Awards love. How is it that you get to become the Atlanta Film Festival? a festival that makes you qualified for an Oscar. How does that happen even? Yeah, I mean, the the Academy of Motion Pictures has a a set of criteria, uh, but of course, every festival actually has to apply for that. And and we are Academy Award qualifying. um, And so for actually three categories for live action, short animation, short and documentary short subjects. So not only do we play some of these feature films that are, of of course, going to be competitive for the Oscars, but they actually look to us uh, to be able to kind of 
qualify uh, short films before they'll even consider them for nomination. And so each of those different branches have approved us to be a qualifier for those. I like to say if the Oscars are sort of the Olympics of movies, then you have to kind of win at one of those qualifying events before you can then go compete. That's the same thing. We're, we serve as one of those qualifying events before the Oscars. That's cool. Well, congrats yeah. for being around for 48 years as well. That's Thanks. huge. Yeah, and it, the kind of cool thing is uh, it's very different from a lot of other festivals our age. This is very much a grassroots community effort. It's it's not started by some institution or some celebrity or some big benefactor. This is really the Atlanta community coming together from people who contribute their time, who contribute their dollars, who you know volunteer, who are on the board or on the staff. It's companies getting involved. It's, it's really a group effort. It's kind of awesome. So then I'm looking at some of your by the number stuff. Percentage of film selections from submissions directed by a female filmmaker, 49 percent is that this year or overall no this year so this <clears throat> and it fluctuates but yeah this year we're half directed by women two-thirds by people of color a quarter of our films uh, connected to georgia so it's kind of it's kind of awesome you see a lot of people on screen who maybe aren't normally represented but it's a little bit of everything and it's something for everyone what's the most unlikely film that got in this year Oh, that's hard to say because, uh, you know, we have films, you know, from, you know, we have, for instance, we have a film from the Dominican Republic about this, you know, young girl, uh, you know, kind of battling the legacy of her of her family. We have an incredible documentary about the prettiest uh, photographer in the world who was a female photographer that uh, really had a number of famous pinups and she would do a lot of photography in the 50s and 60s. Uh, Pretty awesome. Uh, We have uh, another uh, film called The Song for Imogene, which is, you know, incredible hard hitting drama. Uh, we have a film by Lena Headey, um, who a lot of people oh, knew yeah. is uh, from Game of Thrones uh-huh. called The Trap. This is actually her uh, feature film writing, directing debut. Um, so we're excited to feature that. So they come in and you, you guys just all watch them. So you, you get 7,500 movies and then you have a committee that watches them? Yeah, there's a there's a couple hundred people involved in the okay. process. So yeah, we have about 150 volunteers. We have you know a couple dozen uh, contract programmers. We have some year round full time staff that are working on that, and of course even our programming director. So it's a group effort, big yeah. time, just in selecting the films alone. There's a lot of people involved in our screenplay competition because we get a couple thousand screenplays submitted to That's us. A lot of work, um, and that yeah, it really is. And we're actually already starting on next year, so <laughs> it's something we work on throughout the year. Of the 29 feature films, you've watched all of them, correct? I personally have not, no, but okay, I, I'm okay. definitely going Pressure. to be. Trust yeah, your yeah, there's, a, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's like I said, it's a group effort. So I've gotten to see, you know, a couple uh, dozen of them. So I, I'm hope, hopefully by the end of the festival. But the nice thing is even for people who don't get the chance to watch everything that they want to by the end of the pe- festival in person, we have a virtual extension for a week, May wow. 6th through May 12th, where people can watch not everything, but I'd say maybe 80 percent of what we're playing is also available to That's watch at idea. home. That's yeah. actually a great idea. All right, we can't let you go without asking about this Sundance Film Festival story that's brewing out there. Is Ooh. this for I thought this was a joke. It's possible that Atlanta may become the home of the Sundance Film Fest? It's for real. And honestly, I it, it's giving me vibes of what it must have been like when the prospect of the Olympics coming here, which I mean the Olympics move city to city, but I mean before it was announced and decided, everyone thought, you know, what freaking chance would Atlanta actually have of hosting the Olympics and uh, wow. yeah we've actually we've done it better than anyone else in history so there's that right so uh, yeah no this is real this is not only a I mean first of all this rarely ever happens with any film festival much less this is the first time this is that Sundance has ever even been open to the prospect of moving so it's it's huge in general it's huge nationwide it's huge in this sector but I think the fact that we have a real competitive chance is huge for us that's mind blowing. It really is. I didn't realize that that would ever that they had a contract with the city. I thought they just oh here's where we do it. Yeah, no, I mean at the end of the day, yeah, they, they you know they're getting they get public support. You know they're getting they get dollars from at the city, county, state level. Um, they get commitments on transportation, on public safety. I mean, there's a lot that's involved. Um, in putting on an event of that scale. I mean, uh, before COVID, they were getting as many as 130,000 people, not just, a, I'm not talking tickets and attendance, that's yeah. way more than that. I'm talking about individual people that would come 
to a city that's you know Park City is a ten thousand population. Yeah, it's tiny. So it's tiny. So that's why they had to start spilling into Salt Lake. But even still, that's not sure. really enough. And if you keep in mind, like <clears throat> if you look at the Toronto Film Festival, which happens in a city the size of Atlanta, Toronto is. Three times the attendance of Sundance. They have over 400,000 attendees. Well, we're made for it. I mean, definitely the infrastructure. We have great everything, you know? When do you think we'll know? So they've they had, they've actually had, had announced the timeline at the same time they announced uh, the opening uh, of this even being a prospect. So um, they would announce it end of this year, early next year for the festival that would happen in 2027. Damn, that is so cool. Can you imagine? I mean, we're already, half those stars are here doing stuff when when the festival rolls around anyway it's really yeah. exciting that's cool i gotta say what's really exciting though is how much excitement there is around this and yeah, also oh, how bet. how quickly i mean the number of people who are working on this um and we're, we're in this like pre-phase right like we're gonna find out on monday if we move on to the next phase what we've just done right now is submitted this kind of initial that they're gonna narrow down to who then invites so do cool. the big RFP and the big bid, big bid, and then and then there's work beyond that. But yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, to see people from the private, public sector, companies, leaders, all. I mean, there's a huge group of people involved in putting in ideas and commitments, and so that's also just really awesome to see. Man, we were built for it, and we also um, we can't let you escape without mentioning that. Um, didn't Tara get their liquor license? Ooh. We sure did. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> Barnes yeah, is back. Yeah. So just in time. <laughs> I'm gonna start returning to the theater. All right, Christopher <laughs> Escobar. Congratulations on a great festival so far, and of course, it wraps up this week in the Atlanta Film Festival. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is the original. It is 99X.